Hello and welcome. Today we will be looking at Artisan de Genève. These beautiful watches. What are they? Let's have a little look, get in depth and find out what they're all about. In classic official watches fashion, here at Jardin du Mayfair, we have not one, not two, not three, but four Artisan de Genève watches to show you today. I just wanted to take the time to say a huge thank you to everyone that's been subscribing, liking, commenting. We've had 100,000 views on our first YouTube video now, which is insane. It's mind blowing. The support has been incredible. Guys, we need more of you to subscribe. We're getting lots of views, but please do subscribe to keep that content coming. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get into this beautiful box. Artisan de Genève, Switzerland. Look at that, it's tremendous. Okay, so the box is orange, which will probably tell us a lot. It's my personal favorite. It's the Artisan de Genève Spike Lee Edition. Artisan de Genève, three words that automatically make us think both customized and gonna be good. So, who are they? First off, they aren't manufacturers. They don't sell or source watches and they are not affiliated with any brands. Artisan de Genève are a Geneva-based independent workshop that offer high-end modifications to private clients. Essentially, you take the watch to them and they work with you to create your dream, whether that's a skeletonized Nautilus or a Daytona that has been reimagined as a tribute to a vintage piece using modern specs and materials. They will only work on authentic watches which are below five years of age and will only work on unpolished examples so you can't send them your beta. The workshop opened in 2005 and has gone from strength to strength it has a large celebrity following, ranging from Spike Lee to one Pablo Montoya. These are not simply brand spec watches that have been dipped in a bit of DLC and given an aftermarket dial. Artisan de Genève is one of the few workshops that take custom pieces to a level way beyond simple tweaks. Let's get into some of their creations. The Cool Hand Brooklyn Skeleton. The Rolex Daytona 116520 was the starting point for the Brooklyn Skeleton, so it retains the same 40 mm size. It was commissioned by Spike himself, who is an artisan returning client. It was to celebrate being jewelry president for the 74th Cannes Film Festival in 2021. Great choice, Spike. It's a fresh and distinctly modern blend of impeccable skeletonization. It's in Spike's favorite colors, the colors of New York City, blue, white, and orange, just like the flag. Brooklyn appearing in bright orange along the bottom of the subdial is one of my favorite parts. The hands are now a Dauphine style in rose gold to match the open worked movement. While being the star of the show, it's not just the dial that's had the treatment. The movement is still Rolex Caliber 4130, but it has been reworked and decorated to reveal a lot more movement through the tungsten Brooklyn rotor. It's pretty hard to believe that a stock Rolex movement, which although superb and utterly reliable, can also be a bit gorgeous after some elbow grease from Artisan de Genève. With that amount of effort, a clear case back is mandatory. The case has been hand brushed and polished and the bezel is a custom blue ceramic insert which is a perfect match to the dial work. The pushers have start, stop and reset badging and the new crown showcases an orange band through its centre in a nod to the overall colour scheme of the watch. Rubber B have taken care of the bright orange velcro strap so you know the quality is going to be right up there and I wish they were available as standard. Okay, so we don't want to go too in depth on every single model because the video will run far too long. So let's move on to the next one, the tribute to the 6263 Albino. To get this watch, you have to first discuss its origins, which is obviously the vintage 6263 Daytona, which we all know and love, but with a very special twist. Those who know their vintage will know that the subdials on the original silver dial 6263s were black, but there are four known examples of all original, all silver 6263s, which make them an exceptionally rare bird indeed, 
possibly the rarest Daytona. Certainly more rare than the Newman, which makes collectors go a little bit weak at the knees. They are known as Albino, due to being completely monochromatic. Eric Clapton had one, which he auctioned in 2003 to the tune of $505,000. That was five times its pre-auction estimate. It was auctioned again in 2015 for over 1.4 million USD. A clever buyer, I'd say. Some say that this was the watch that launched vintage Rolex collecting. It was from being a bit of a niche hobby to being preposterously expensive and fraught with anxiety. Thanks, Eric. So, on to the Artisan variant. This is based on a 116-520, and since I'm obsessed with water resistance, so I'm going to thank the stars that being from a modern piece, it comes with a modern resistance. 100 meters, so you can dunk it, swim in it, do what you want. Do that with a 6263, and you'll be crying all the way to your watchmaker. The Daytona will be drying out in a bag of basmati, and you'll be hit with a hefty bill. The Sunday dial and subdials are all silvered with chronograph and subdial hands. These hands are the only actual colour on the dial landscape, and indeed the watch itself is otherwise completely monochrome with a black, bakelite bezel. It has fully brushed steel case and bracelet. The simplicity and restraint of this piece is, in my opinion, what makes it absolutely stunning. It's a real case of less is more on the design front. The first thing to note here is the crown guards are now absent. The pushers are Millerige Mark 00 variants, so it's an entirely modern case that has been parred back to its vintage roots. This theme continues with the use of Bakelite for the bezel, a favoured material for the oldies. The 44 Jewel Cal 4130 Daytona movement has been parred back to becoming manual winding and per its muse, the automatic works such as the rotor have been dispensed with. Because the movement, which gives 72 hours of reserve, has had the artisan treatment, it also gets the sapphire case back through which to admire it. This is definitely one of my favourite nods to a vintage watch that I've seen Artisan create. While I love the modern skeletonized designs which really flex their technical prowess, my sweet spot is vintage design and this to my eye is just the cream of the crop. It's a real if you know you know type of watch with that hidden bit of history to boot. Here we have it, the Mika Hakkinen Challenge. This Hakkinen uses a Daytona 116506 as its base, so it's a weighty lump of platinum with a Formula One theme. Fitting given that Mika is an F1 champion who has earned his nickname the Flying Fin. The colour scheme of this one is pale blue and orange, also known as the golf colours, which are both heavily reminiscent of Formula One and regularly seen on McLaren, who Hakkinen drove for. These pieces are available in titanium, white gold and platinum. Platinum being the unicorn of the three, which is of course why I have it here. There are slight differences between the titanium and precious metal models, which make them easy to identify. The steering wheel shaped dial frame sits above the open worked movement. It's different between titanium and precious models. This piece features a sandblasted frame which almost glitters in different lights, whereas the titanium variant features a matte anthracite coating. The hands have been painted blue with subdial hands in orange. This is also a switch from titanium, which has blue hand subdials and polished hands over its darker frame. The crown is the final difference between the metal editions, as the platinum and white gold variants feature a blue band, while the titanium bears the same, but in orange. It's these little twists and differences that collectors really enjoy, so it's great to see them present here in a watch that is completely different in the first place. A bit of icing to the already cool cake. The bezel on all editions is made of titanium, and it's titanium G5, which references both the material and grade five being utterly high-end. The entirety of the case and bracelet is brushed, leaving no polished parts to detract from the main features. A regular grizzle from Daytona fans is the shiny element of the case and polished center links, which are classed as scratch magnets. 
So I genuinely do enjoy seeing the difference that brushing makes, particularly on platinum, where scuffs and swirls are just that little bit more painful on the polished areas, but less noticed on the brushed finishing. The modified Daytona 4130 movement on the Hakkinen has been again switched from automatic to hand wound and it's been sandblasted with nickel palladium. That gives it the beautiful sapphire case back so you can see inside. If you look closely, the positioning of the jewels across the central band of the map movement just look phenomenal and would have been obscured had the rotor remained in place. They had to take it away. Again, it's the little details that really make Artisan de Genève exciting. One of our favorite features of the workshop is that different clients can bring wildly different design concepts, usually associated with their field. And then Artisan can take these ideas and make the same base watches fit the personality of their commissioners perfectly. The Hakkinen is unmistakably Formula One. Not because it screams with badges and great swathes of petrol headed color, but through the use of subtle details and finishes such as the steering wheel frame coded subdials. The Lance Armstrong project uses the same Daytona base, but is a totally different beast to the Hakkinen or the Brooklyn, both of which feature skeletonization and modernity. With that said, let's get into the Armstrong project. As Lance Armstrong rightly states in his video for Artisan, the thing about my story is most of the world knows both parts of it. They know the good times of it and the bad times of it. That doesn't change the fact that I have those memories from the good times that I cherish the most. The downfall was unexpected and the true test then is how you respond as a man who has to reinvent his life. With that in mind, we can see pretty clearly why he chose to open up his watch in the same way that his life was laid bare for all to see and why he chose yellow as a nod to the seven jerseys he won and wore for 83 days while riding the Tour de France, as well as being the color of his Live Strong Foundation. The open work on this piece, which is again based on the Daytona 116520, is way more severe than on other ADG releases. You can see that on the left part of the dial and movement, there is literally nothing but space, which is a deliberate nod to Armstrong's history being out in the open. It has a little bit of niche to it. The bezel on this one is a pulsations variant which matches the dial layout and can be used along with the chronograph function to time and take your pulse and calculate your heart rate. Perfect for a cyclist watch and the Thunderbolt chrono hand is a very cool touch. It's similar to the orange bolt hand of the Rolex Milgauss. You can see that the third subdial has been removed from the dial as this piece is a pulse counter which renders the 12 hour sub unnecessary. In its space, nothing, which is the whole point. The heavy modified Daytona movement is again scaled back to manual and a mixture of sandblast and black which creates great contrast not entirely dissimilar to the rear end of Amiga's dark side of the moon Apollo 8 edition which bears some overall similarities in colour, scheme, movement and view. This is on bracelet at the moment, but a custom strap is also provided by Rubber B and it's black with a yellow center stripe design to echo the painted center strips of the American roads that Armstrong still enjoys riding on. Although we can't provide the one-off straps made by Rubber B, we are an authorized stockist. So if you want some world-class rubber for your watch, do give us a call. So, now that we've been through all of the history, let's get on to the prices. We have the Mika Hakkinen Challenge at £132,000, obviously made of platinum. The 6263 Albino at £48,000 and the Lance Armstrong at £75,000. And as you know, my personal favourite, the Cool Hand Brooklyn Skeleton at £64,000. Guys, what do you think of custom watches? I know that there's a big taboo around them. It's my opinion that these guys do the absolute best job. Um, have a little look at them. We'll get you some really close up and beautiful shots now. And I will be interested to see in the comments what you think about custom pieces. 
I hope you have enjoyed our artisan video. These watches are incredible. Thank you to everyone who has been following along the journey. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe and we'll keep the content coming.